Have you ever wondered what makes James Bond's look so iconic? Is it his suave demeanor, his lethal skills, or his remarkable gadgets? Or is it something as simple as his wristwatch? It can be thought that people are attracted to him because of his lifestyle and his look on different occasions. His watch collection is one of the main things that people are paying attention to and speak of all the time. But the question is why? Join me as we explore his watch collection. But before we move forward, do subscribe to my channel. Doing so will let you stay updated with all of my latest uploads. The James Bond franchise is renowned for its tradition of showcasing exquisite timepieces on the big screen. When the iconic 007 character debuted in the 1962 film Dr. No, the franchise chose to feature the legendary Rolex Submariner, which perfectly captured the adventurous and daring spirit of the character. Over the years, the series has continued to feature a variety of watches from brands like Rolex, Omega, Seiko, and Tag Heuer. Many watch enthusiasts look to the James Bond films to get an idea of the latest trends in the watch industry and which timepieces are in vogue. Some of the watches worn by Bond in the movies have gone on to become iconic timepieces in their own right, achieving great success and popularity. As the franchise looks for the next James Bond, it remains to be seen if there will be a shift in its long-standing tradition of showcasing serious horology on the silver screen. Without further ado, here are some of the timeless timepieces featured in James Bond's movies. Number 1. Gruen Precision 510 The first watch to make an appearance in a James Bond movie was the Gruen Precision 510. This legendary timepiece made its debut in the 1962 film Dr. No. The watch boasted a 34mm gold field case with a white dial, featuring Arabic numerals at the 12, 3, and 9 o'clock positions and a large seconds dial at the 6 o'clock position. Sadly, the Ohio-based watch brand that produced the Gruen Precision 510 went bankrupt in the late 1950s and no longer produces wrist watches today. The brand was a popular watchmaker from the early 1900s through the 1950s. The Gruen Precision 510 made two more appearances in James Bond films in You Only Live Twice 1967 and Diamonds Are Forever 1971 before retiring from the big screen. Number 2. Bridling Navi Timer 806 The Bridling Navi Timer 806, also referred to as the Bridling Top Time Chronograph, is another notable timepiece seen in a James Bond film. In Thunderball, Bond famously used this iconic watch for some of his trickery. Interestingly, the same bridling watch eventually made its way to the English market in 2013, where a lucky collector purchased it for a mere 25 pounds. The collector then quickly sold the watch at an auction for a staggering 100,000 pounds. Number 3. Rolex GMT Master Even today, Many watch enthusiasts debate whether the Rolex GMT Master or an Omega watch is the true Casino Royale timepiece. In the 1967 film adaptation of the James Bond novel, which saw Sean Connery replaced by David Niven as Bond, the Rolex GMT Master made an appearance on Niven's wrist. This watch is believed to be the true Casino Royale watch as it was the timepiece that Ian Fleming, the creator of James Bond, gifted to the character in the original book. Number 4. Rolex Submariner 5513 and Pulsar LED Digital Watch The introduction of Roger Moore as Agent 007 in the 1973 film Live and Let Die marked a new era for the James Bond franchise. In the subsequent 1974 film The Man with the Golden Gun, the Submariner 5513 made an exclusive appearance as Bond's chosen timepiece. 
However, during the film's opening sequence, Bond sported a Pulsar LED digital watch from the Hamilton Watch Company, highlighting the rise of quartz watches in the industry. This move proved to be an influential moment for the quartz watch industry. Number 5. Seiko 0674 LC as digital watches gained popularity in the mid to late 1970s, the Bond franchise kept up with the trend. In the 1977 movie, The Spy Who Loved Me, Roger Moore can be seen wearing a rectangular Seiko 0674 LC that prints out tiny messages from a fellow super spy in the film. However, the analog timepiece was not forgotten as the Rolex GMT Master also made an appearance in the 1977 thriller. Number 6. Seiko M354 Memory Bank Calendar In keeping with the theme and title of the movie Moonraker, the Bond franchise fully embraced digital technology for this release. The watch featured in the film had an explosive charge on its back which played a significant role towards the end of the movie. Moonraker was released in 1979, which was the peak of the digital watch era. Therefore, it's understandable why the franchise opted for an all-digital timepiece in this film. Number 7. Seiko 6923-8080-SPD-09 Seiko remained the top choice for the Bond franchise in 1985 with the release of A View to a Kill which marked Roger Moore's final appearance as Agent 007. Moore sported no less than four watches in the film. He was seen wearing a Seiko SPR 007 7A28-7T20 in one of the movie's early scenes, followed by a quartz chronograph with a white dial. He also briefly wore a Seiko H558-500 SPW001 dive watch and a two-tone Seiko 6923-8080 SPD-09. Interestingly, Bond wore a Rolex Datejust in the scene where he discovers that his driver had been killed, which surprised many fans of the franchise. Number 8. Tag Heuer Professional Night Dive 980.031 In 1987, Timothy Dalton won the role of James Bond over Pierce Brosnan and starred in The Living Daylights. The film featured a Tag Heuer Professional Night Dive watch in what would be its only appearance in the franchise. The watch's luminous dial contrasted nicely with its black case and bracelet, and it was well received by fans of the series. Dalton's portrayal of James Bond was widely regarded as being tougher and less humorous than his predecessors, but he would go on to feature as Bond once more. Number 9. Rolex Submariner 16610 Timothy Dalton's second and final performance as James Bond also saw the return of an iconic Rolex timepiece for one last adventure. This was in the 1989 film License to Kill, where another legendary submariner with the reference number 16610 played a prominent role. It was the last time Dalton would wear a Rolex watch in the Bond franchise, marking the end of an era. Number 10. Omega C Master Professional 300M Reference 2541.80 The next Bond movie wasn't released until six years later, in 1995. The film Golden Eye marked a new beginning for the franchise, featuring a new official watch partner in Omega and a new actor Pierce Brosnan who was a solid and reliable choice with his sharp looks and humorous demeanor. The Omega Seamaster made its debut in this film as a custom-made quartz dive watch that featured a laser in its bezel and a built-in detonator, adding to the gadgetry that Bond was known for. Number 11. Omega Seamaster Professional 300M Reference 2531.80 in the 1997 film Tomorrow Never Dies, 
Brosnan once again sported an Omega C Master, but this time it was an automatic chronometer version that was custom made. The watch could remotely detonate a hand grenade, adding to the impressive gadgetry that Bond was known for. Brosnan and the same Seamaster model appeared again in the 1999 film, The World Is Not Enough. But this time, the watch had more functions, doubling as both an ultra-powerful light source and a quick action grappling hook. The Bond franchise continued its partnership with Omega, and in the 2002 film, Die Another Day, Brosnan wore the Omega C Master Professional 300M, reference 2531.80, for the final time. This film is considered one of the franchise's most iconic movies, and the watch played a significant role in several key scenes. Number 12. Omega Sea Master Planet Ocean Reference 2201.50.00 The 2008 film Quantum of Solace was widely regarded as a disappointment by many fans of the Bond franchise. The movie featured very few glimpses of a new model of the Omega Sea Master Planet Ocean, which was water resistant to a depth of 600 meters and had a stainless steel bracelet. In one scene in the movie, Bond plunged into the deep sea with a watch strapped to his wrist, showcasing its durability and functionality. However, the watch did not play a significant role in the film, which disappointed many fans of the franchise who had grown accustomed to seeing Bond's timepieces as an integral part of the character's image. Number 13. Omega Sea Master Planet Ocean the 2012 Bond movie, Skyfall, was one of the franchise's most successful movies, and it featured two different Omega Sea Masters. In the opening scene, Bond wore a Planet Ocean 600M with a unique titanium case. The other watch was the Omega Sea Master Aquaterra, which had a stunning blue dial and stainless steel bracelet. The Planet Ocean 600M that featured in the movie was sold for just under 200,000 euros at the legendary Christie's 50 Years of Bond auction, highlighting the collectible nature of Bond's timepieces. The watches played a more prominent role in this film compared to the previous one, once again becoming an integral part of the character's image. As you saw in this video, his collection is not limited to Swiss-made watches, but also include Japanese-made ones. Does this mean the look doesn't always depend on how much the watch will cost you? Make sure to know the other reasons behind this in our newly released video. So as we come to the end of our exploration of the timeless timepieces of James Bond, we can't help but marvel at the impact that these watches have had on popular culture. From the iconic Rolex Submariner to the latest Omega Sea Master, each watch has played a significant role in defining the character of 007. What's your favorite James Bond watch? Are there any watches you'd like to see in future Bond films? Share your thoughts in the comments below. Don't forget to hit the like and subscribe buttons to receive notifications from my channel instantly. Thanks for watching and I'll see you at the next one.